Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining um, our webinar on active citizenship, um, the potential of ESG, um, which is environmental, social, and gov uh, governance standards for the fit fitness and physical activity sector. We're extremely happy to have such a competent uh, panel of experts from our industry. We have Tani Gray Thompson from, um, uh, from UK Active, Chair of UK Active, with Jennifer from GoFit. Sorry, we have Jennifer from Basic Fit. We have uh, Steve from GoFit, and we have Luigi from the Wellness Foundation. So um, the concept of active citizenship is um, a concept that uh, Europe Active will um, uh, focus a lot on over the, over the coming years, uh, positioning our sector towards uh, public health and uh, physical, social, and, uh, and mental well-being as, as, a, as, a, as a result of that. Um, and my interest in particular was uh, raised, um, and perhaps I have to say that uh, my background is political science and European studies, so I've been spending quite um, a bit of uh, focus in my life on the concept of citizenship and how you create strong citizens in community. And uh, I was approached by um, Herman Rutgers and Jan Middelkamp um, when they were putting uh, our Fitness Horizon 2030 uh, together for Europe Active uh, to write this chapter on corporate social responsibility, another term which basically is the same as uh, ESG, um, environmental, social and, and governance um, standards. And, um, and while writing this chapter last fall, I came across some really, really interesting cases in our industry, in particular uh, cases um, from uh, GoFit, Basic Fit and the Wellness Foundation, uh, and many other cases um, that are presented in this chapter in our Fitness Horizon 2030 book. Uh, and I was amazed by uh, the level of creativity and, and the number of uh, ESG cases in our sector. And I thought that, you know, we should spend much more time as a sector uh, presenting these uh, great cases and this great creativity around ESG to the wider world and to our own sector, of course. If you could switch to the next slide, Robbie, please. So just a few words about the, the very concept of citizen. It, it's a very, it's a truly European concept that is at the basis of democratic society. And it goes back to the Roman Empire. Um, the Latin word for, ci, uh, for citizen is civis. Um, and many of you will know, certainly the French speaking part of Europe will know that the French word is citizen, or citoyen, sorry, the French word for citizen, citoyen. And that was popularized during the French Revolution when, um, when uh, the concept of equal rights for citizens were reintroduced in society. And that became, that spread to the whole of Europe and the, the very idea that we as individual citizens are columns or pillars underneath uh, democratic society and, and society is reliant on us as citizens uh, carrying our societies and taking responsibility uh, for our society. Um, one of the team members of Europe Active, who is uh, Italian actually from, from Rome, he gave me this, um, this Latin um, slogan called, um, or it goes, uh, Concordia Civium Moros Urbium, which basically means that the, the unity of citizens is um, the best defense of society. And I very much agree that we need to understand as Europeans that, that our, our societies, our democracy are only as strong as our citizenry and our, our individual citizens. So next slide, Robbie. So basically, um, the question is, of course, how can we empower uh, and help create strong uh, citizens as a sector? And uh, we believe that that um, physical, social, mental well-being uh, through physical activity, through fitness, through exercise, uh, has an immense, um, immense uh, potential in that regard in, in strengthening citizens for strengthened communities. Um, and with the cases that we'll present today through uh, the specific cases of the Wellness Foundation, GoFit and uh, Basic Fit, we'll show specifically how that can be done. Certainly going through uh, COVID-19, a very um, challenging period for our sector and society at large, um, the, the concept of ESG has been used to really show our rightful place in society and how our sector and, and our industry can help take responsibility as citizens uh, for a very difficult period for, uh, for Europe, for our societies. Next slide, please, Robbie. And on a wider, wider scale, and again, we have a brilliant Latin slogan, slogan going back to, uh, back to Roman times, um, mensana in corpore sano. And, and I know um, that that's a, a slogan that is on the walls of Technogym. I saw that when I visited the, the Wellness Foundation um, uh, last, um, 
uh, sorry, earlier this year. And the, basically this means um, a, a healthy spirit or a health, healthy mind and a healthy body. And that points to the concept of, of physical, social, mental well-being, that we need holistic health. And our sector has a very important uh, role to play in that regard, not only f- focusing on physical health, but also focusing on social mental health. And put in particular, certainly during this uh, difficult time of COVID-19, um, we've heard from so many of our members and users and clients saying, we need our community spaces in the local fitness club. We need you know, the social well-being, the mental well-being of, of, of exercise that we have uh, in our, our fitness community, in our local clubs. Uh, and we very much look, back, look forward to coming back to our clubs because we are lacking that. So, and, and there's unique potential in that for us as a sector to position ourselves towards a much, much more holistic perception of health and how we can provide that uh, to a wider society and be those meeting place, places and centers around physical, social, mental well-being in uh, our communities. Next slide, Robbie. So basically, this is just a quote from um, our medium-term uh, strategy uh, uh, with Europe Active where we've defined some of the key issues that we've focused, focused on um, moving through and meeting the challenges of COVID-19 and how we will address over the coming year um, um, reopening and getting back to uh, or, or getting to the new normal of our industry, <coughs> where we see um, active citizenship and ESG having a, a, a special role in that regard. Um, and uh, we would write, like to do everything we can to raise awareness in our industry and outside of our industry about the great cases of ESG that uh, many of organizations across our industry are, um, are um, uh, actually doing on a daily basis. Um, we want to promote and create social engagement of our industry towards our wider societies, and by that, um, increase the influence of our industry and our sector in society uh, as we move out of um, the shadow of COVID-19. So with that, I'm very happy to hand over to uh, to Tani. Um, thanks so much. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, that's great. Uh, so I'm Tani Gray Thompson. I'm chair of UK Active. I've been chair for the last five years, and for me, the active citizenship is a really um, fantastic term because it gets over so much more about the power of physical activity. It's the process of being physically active but I think it enables us to tie in all the other benefits that being active can be. And it's the camaraderie and it's friendship. And, uh, and, and in these really difficult times, um, I think we, we need to do as much as we can to, to focus on those positive things. On a personal level, I've now been at home for 10 weeks, which is the longest I've been at home uh, in one go, I think in 20 years, actually. And, and the whole debate about working from home is really interesting because we, you know, we haven't just all picked up our offices and are able to work from home. Our lives have changed. And in, in my other role as a parliamentarian, I thought Brexit was going to be the toughest thing that we were going to have to deal with. And for us, you know, starting to find our way through that, we then come into COVID-19. And I think what it's shown is our ability to, to change and think differently. The world has changed more uh, I think in the last 12 weeks, and certainly in my life in Parliament, that it hasn't 700 years. I never thought that you know we would ever have has a Parliament that would go online. But it shows if you're creative, what you can do. And I think what we need to be doing as an industry is keeping some of that creativity uh, as we go forward. Um, the other thing that I realised very early on is you can't buy a kettlebell for love nor money. That's sort of very British saying. Uh, my husband suggested selling half our garage that we could make a fortune. And the one thing it's made me confront is actually how many elastic training bands I have in my house, which I don't think I will ever need 70. And they're the ones that he knows about. But, um, you know, on a personal level, I also miss, you know, the gym. And um, and that's what we're seeing, um, that people are, you know, missing a big part of their lives. Um, And from a UK active point of view, you know, the things that we were working on previously, which was revitalizing the high streets, opening schools in the summer holidays to ensure that children, you know, still had access to, to fit and healthy summers. We know children lose a huge amount of their, their fitness in the summer holidays. Um, in the UK, 39% of sports facilities are behind school gates. You know, active aging we're working on. None of those things have gone away. We're just trying to still work on those, but work on it with some of the, the unknowns. Um, 
I was going to say, well, lucky, lucky is not the right word, but um, w one of the, the things that we were able to do in terms of the UK was watching as, as Europe locked down, and there's a whole debate about when we should have done that or not, but um, some of the things we're able to learn from, from watching what other countries are doing has been really important. Where I've been really proud of the team at UK Active and also the sector is how much they've stepped up um, and how much they're talking and communicating with each other and they're holding together as a sector because everybody wants us to you know open as soon as we can but it's got to be within a, a safe environment um, and the sector has really really come together and you know ultimately there are competing businesses that is the reality but they all recognize that unless we work together um, we're not going to be able to um, do the things that we want to achieve. And again, where I'm really proud of the team at UK Active, we've been commended by um, various government departments just for the approach that we've taken in terms of professionalism, planning, detail, um, that we're sort of not rushing to do things that, that aren't safe. Um, but that doesn't come without its challenges, how you know, we redeploy our own staff at UK Active, what the team does day and out, what they're able to do. I've talked about working from home. Um, and one thing I, I want to say, you know, as, as a, an individual who has personal gym membership, I've just been really impressed with the response and communication that I've had. Um, and, you know, I, I think we recognise now more than ever that, that level of customer service is, is really important. Um, and activity has never been more important. And one of the questions I've got is how, in this new world, the people who are obviously now being physically active, who are doing things they've never done before, how we get them to stay being physically active. Just where I live, the number of people I've seen riding around on a bike who you know they've never been on the bike before. So I've now actually taken to going out with a set of adjustable spanners to get people sitting at the right height. I'm not sure if this is good or bad, socially distancing and telling people what to do. But if they're not having a good experience of, of being out riding on their bike, you know, these are the people we need to be finding as new customers, as new people to, to bring back in. Some of the other challenges we have, you know, the four countries that make up the UK, we, we have different policies on lockdown. Uh, and that doesn't, you know, that, that comes with a number of challenges in terms of what people are allowed to do and when they're allowed to do it. Um, but it comes back to the sector being really, really clear about the stages it wants to take to opening up. Um, and I think that's important. Some of the amazing things I've seen, we've seen gym instructors doing food shopping um, and helping people who they know from their day and weekly contact with people who are coming through their doors, who are vulnerable, who need help. And, you know, stuff like that is, is amazing. Sadly, we can't claim this as a sector, but there was um, uh, an airline pilot who, who got grounded. So was then doing food delivery. So there's been some really interesting things, the way people have been treating each other, which I think has, has been lovely. Um, but what we have to keep doing is, is getting um, governments and the politicians to understand the size and scale of our sector, how many people are employed, you know, secondary, the, the contribution that we make to British society as a whole. Um, and that's what we'll kind of continue doing um, as UK Active in terms of we, we need to press those messages home. And what the world's going to look like in the new world? We, well, we, we don't know. You know, when will older people feel able to travel? When will disabled people feel able to travel? Um, what we can't do is, is wait for others to um, do some of that research. We, we need to be on top of that right now. And some of the really scary stats of where we are at the moment in, in the UK. Um, during lockdown, only 10% of those children who were allowed to attend school actually did. We know that 38% of children are doing less physical activity now. Um, and in a month's time, although our schools have just started to open up, we're going back into a summer holiday. Of the 621,000 young people who access free school meals during this time, only 136,000 are. And there's been an 81% increase in food banks. And from children, that's gone up 121%. So um, with all those really challenging things that we're looking at, I think our sector also sees it as an opportunity uh, to to do things in a different way, to push those messages. We, we want to open up. We have an ambition to open 7,000 schools. That's not gonna happen this year. You know, last year we opened 150. But, but now more than ever, physical activity is a really, really important part of bringing people together uh, and, and helping um, people get back to whatever normal life is gonna be. Um, 
So we have to keep working with the government agencies, with the public, figure out our new way of working. Um, and what I would say to the sector, keep, keep doing what you're doing, keep working as a sector during this really difficult time, because we're the ones who can make um, a huge difference to life in whatever the new world is going to be. Um, thank you for your time. That's it from me. Um, I'm now going to pass over to uh, Steve Ward, who's going to follow up. Steve, are you there? Steve, I, I think you're on mute. He's mute. There we go. I'm in the ah. game. You, you would have thought after all of these months that <laughs> I'd, I'd have figured out. But all this jumping between Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom, uh, uh, and, and every other uh, platform in between. Um, Robbie, have you got that uh, loaded up there? Um, yep. All right, so you're switching me to being in control? Yep. We're good to go. Okay, um, hello everyone. Um, nice to, to, to be with you all back uh, alongside uh, my, my former colleague there, Baroness Tani Gray Thompson. Um, I've admired uh, from a little bit of a distance the great work that, that UK Act and she's been doing um, representing the industry in these past, past few months. Um, I'm reminded uh, what uh, what a benefit it is to have her her support for us as as an industry at this time. Um, speaking to you from my my new relatively still new position uh, over at, over at GoFit, um, we are a Iberian business based across Spain and Portugal. Um, this is the outside of one of our locations, uh, Peña Grande in in Madrid. Um, you'll see on the wall there our our mission uh, from on the wall on the outside as you come in. Um, La Felicidad Tambien Si Entrena, which means happiness is trainable as well. And on the topic of sustainability, you will see in the top left hand corner that we have slightly addressed that to say that sustainability is trainable as well. So let's do it. Um, by way of a brief introduction um, to uh, our business. Um, we operate 19 locations, um, a total of 250,000 customers. Um, working in those locations, we are um, working in very, very close partnership with public bodies across Spain and Portugal, and also some other social value minded organizations, such as schools, education facilities, even the Catholic Church, um, organizations that have sustainability. Um, and social value at the heart of what they do. Um, and our mission is to provide uh, an overwhelming value proposition of quality at an affordable price for 100% of the population. Um, I dwell just for a moment on our, our, our vision, our, our mission, our values. We'll come on to, to talk about that. But the one thing to stress here is that for some years, um, from the very start of the business, a commitment to the improvement of society has been at the heart of our values as, a, as an organization. What's very useful now um, where for organizations that do have a, a commitment to the improvement of society is that there are some fantastic resources available around the world to help guide your plans, your strategies, your directions. And Andreas has just asked to, me to share with you how we have used one of those tools to affect within GoFit and the tool that we use to guide our actions around this agenda and this commitment that is in our values is the social uh, sustainable development goals of the, the United Nations that set out quite clearly the objectives that we all have around the world to contribute to the betterment of society. Um, as Tani's alluded to, I believe it's very clear that we now know that the, the health and vibrancy and success of our industry 
is inextricably linked to the health, success, vibrancies of the, of, of, of the societies in which we live. Um, it's no longer possible for business to stand on the sidelines and think that the health and well-being of society as a whole is the responsibility of government or the state. Businesses have to show up and take a commitment and, 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 and make a contribution. And it's in these um, domains that the um, sustainable development goals have been, have been set out. What we have done, and I'm not going to talk through each point of these, you'll be very pleased to know, is align our strategy, our mission, our vision, our values, um, to understand where in the sustainability um, agenda, the sustainable development goals, we make the, the greatest contribution. And this has included looking at a much deeper level at each of our values and understanding against the dimension ambiental, so in terms of the environmental components and the economic components and the social components, where we believe we could as an organization in the future make a contribution against each of these agendas. What this has enabled us to do is really crystallize as an organization why this is necessary, if there's any doubt of that. Okay, it's been with us since day one, but it will be with us in the future even more. But to understand um, for what purpose, why, why are we doing this? Um, what really drives us and how, how do we want to, to act as an organization? And for us, that is, we want to use our resources, our capabilities in a manner that is fair, generous, shared, effective and responsible. And it's helped us to boil down our action plan into four key areas of our impact on a healthy life of society, to be the pioneers and reference points in, within our sector, to operate in a fair, responsible way in terms of our governance and with efficient and effective management. And going to this level, it enables us again in our action plan to align the sustainable development goals at this level and actually start to audit what is our contribution um, within our action plan against each of those different pillars and each of those different dimensions to start to recognize where we have um, strong areas of contribution and where as an organization we ha may have more to do. Now, there's a whole load of actions 2019 that we've taken. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, um, but just to show you, and these slides will be available afterwards, that some of these things are really um, fundamental bread and butter or activities that organizations will be doing, should be doing, the sustainable development goals, giving us that framework. But it's also led to us making some really significant moves, significant moves that we communicate to our customers as part of our commitment. So one of those is that 100% of the energy used in our centres now comes from renewable sources. We have totally transformed the way we manage um, water in all of our pools to reduce our water wastage, uh, Im improve the, the amount of chemicals that we're, we're pumping into, into the, the wider world. Um, we've totally uh, renovated and transformed our investment plan into uh, NGOs and sporting bodies. We've um, improved the, the length of life, um, sustainability of all of our facilities. So in all of the different areas that we can take actions, we take them, we take them aligned to the action plan, we take them aligned to the dimension that we wish to work in, whether it's economic or societal or um, environmental, and we can align them to our values as an organization. So the sustainable development goals have given us a fantastic tool to do that, a fantastic framework to do it, and what it also enables us to do is to track our progress as an organization. So we have every year a dual audit. Of course, we have a financial audit of proprietary to show how we're managed and, and what our results are. But we also have an audit of our social value as an organization, which is completed by PwC. Here you see the results from our 2017 data placing our social impact as an organization is approaching 190 million euros as a result of the interventions the actions and um, strategic plans our team have put in place since that time it's looking like our 2020 report will see that reach um, around the 300 million euros level a significant increase in in our impact and what it was showing previously is that for every one euro of turnover that we generate, we're generating 3.2 euros positive impact on society. 
And the key message here is that it's no longer acceptable for businesses to think that there are some organizations that have to focus solely on commercial success. There are other types of organizations that worry about social impact. It is totally possible to be a very successful commercial organization and have a significant measurable evidence-based quantifiable impact on the societies that we serve. And it's not a choice that you have to do one or the other. What has also happened, of course, is that this um, crisis presented us with a test of all of our um, approaches to this agenda. Um, we've all spoken at, at great lengths about what we've all done, but there's nothing like going from 250,000 customers walking through your door on a regular basis to zero overnight to really test your true commitments uh, that you talk about and very proud to the, as an organization, our president showed very strong leadership right at the very first moment of the crisis to say that we will overcome the crisis without leaving anyone behind, whether that is in society or in, for our customers or for our team. Uh, many measures that we took during this time um, in all of those different areas, um, including um, launching a fund which we have raised over a million euros to support um, healthcare relief efforts in terms of materials to, to support. Um, but perhaps the greatest area of our responsibility going forward is the way in which we reopen our facilities. You know, there are many of us, you know, will, will be looking at the regulations, the protocols, the discussions with government to find, you know, what is the, what is, what, what's the key to being able to reopen our doors. Um, but the key to reopening our doors is the reassurance that we give to our customers that we are a professional industry that takes their safety seriously um, and that we, there is not one measure that we can take to improve their safety that we're not taking. Um, we've developed a protocol in partnership with Sheffield Hallam University, with the University of Ray Juan Carlos, to review our customer journey, every single touch point of our customer journey, to understand how can we make it safer from an epidemiologist's perspective, we are taking those measures, we're investing in those measures, we're showing our responsibility at this time to not just get our doors open, but create the safest possible environment, um, the most professional representation of our industry that we can possibly do. Uh, that's our responsibility for our team, for our customers, for society, and I believe also for our industry as well, that we do not want to be that organisation that lets our industry down and pays lip service to these standards. Um, but doesn't implement them in full. And that means also that, you know, we're reassuring everyone that we will only open our facilities when we're totally in the position that we're confident that we're going to do that in the right way and, and not one second too soon. So looking ahead, um, the sustainable development goals and using that as a framework for developing your sustainability strategy, you know, it's possible to see how the evolution of our contribution has changed um, before the COVID crisis into this current situation, but also where we have gaps in our plans for the years ahead. And we very much look forward to seeing facilities such as this one. This is Vallamoso in the city of Madrid. It is the city of Madrid's number one rated public service. It's a facility with 27 and a half thousand customers that use it. Uh, that are members of it um, and we very much look forward to getting back to the point where we can make a contribution to society with our facilities such as these. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. And here I am and I need to share my screen again. As always, so... Uh, why isn't my hold on just one second my powerpoint's not coming up but i believe i can find it yes okay and i'm i'm now disproving the the stereotype that women can multitask because i'm not able to introduce myself at the same time as <laughs> set up my powerpoint on uh, on zoom um, my name is Jennifer. I'm the International Retention Manager and Member Engagement Manager at Basic Fit International. 
Um, I'm, a, I'm also a proud board member of Europe Active and the Women in Fitness Association Ambassador for the Netherlands. Um, I, I'm really happy to be a part of this conversation today because it, it, it really speaks to my heart as why I am a, a proud part of the, of, of the fitness sector because what we do as a greater good for people is, is really why I get up every day. And it's also a big reason why I've chosen uh, to work for basic fit and to work for organ work with organizations like Europe active and uh, the women in fitness association. So I thought I would kick off with a little introduction of a uh, of basic fit uh, for those of you who don't know us. Um, we're the value for money fitness chain with, 828 clubs and 2.3 million members in five different countries across Europe. Um, I wanted to share with you our, our vision and mission because it's really um, a foundation for our strategy. And I'm gonna show you that as, a, as it pertains to um, our active citizenship. So our vision is that everyone should have access to the power of fitness, and this is what we offer. Our great value clubs are affordable and easy to access for family and ind individuals, from novices to athletes. We believe that we're the preferred fitness brand because we focus on what really matters and continuously evolve our member experience. And our mission is that basic means uncomplicated, essential, and effective. We believe we deliver great value by helping our members achieve their fitness goals through an excellent foundation of personalized fitness solutions, clever add-ons, making the most of their time and money. Um, so uh, there's, there's a little bit of an overlap I see in our presentation, <laughs> Steve. Um, we, we also base our uh, sustainability, and I think it's important to say that um, the, the presentation is focused on active citizenship, but I think the word that we use within basic fit to really represent active citizenship is sustainability. Uh, there, there are sustainability KPIs that, that are required of every department, and it's something that we report on and we're managed on and we follow up on every quarter. So it, it's, it's a big part of our DNA as the organization. And while there are um, 17 sustainable development goals, we really focus on three of them just to, just to create a, a laser focus. And if you'd like to re read any more about this in detail, please refer to our annual report on our, on our corporate website. So um, I wanted to focus on how we actually how we focus on the, the sustainable development goals. So for, the, for health and well-being, uh, we really believe that because we offer an affordable gym membership and we have locations in so many different markets that never had fitness before, uh, we're able to attract people who have never been to the club. So about 30% of our new joiners, and this varies per market pretty significantly, have never been to the gym before. Uh, and because of this, we have a balanced and well-represented membership base, and, and that really helps us pr uh, promote diversity, and that, that is another big pillar for us, for our members, and also for our employees. Um, we're very actable and charitable health uh, charitable health initiatives. So in the, in the Netherlands, we partner with uh, Johan Krauf in, Bel in Belgium, Sport to BE, and uh, in France, uh, Sport Dance La Ville. And I'm probably saying that brutally, but uh, anyway, so and those initiatives focus on promoting activity uh, for our youth. And the, the two charities in uh, France and in Belgium actually take it a step further and help them even with, uh, with job placement as well. Uh, regarding the, the education goal, um, th this is a near and dear uh, piece to my heart because I really want through the services that we offer, through the, through the information that we offer our members when they, when they join us, to give them the tools to be their own coach. 
uh, many of our communication channels are digital and we focus on the digital channels because we can really measure to see what what has been received by our members and the and the actions that are taken as a result of that so we're, we're constantly measuring the 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 type of information that we're giving to our members trying to figure out if it's actionable and they're be and they're able to translate about um, uh, health, fitness, and lifestyle and, and translate it into their behaviors. Um, and uh, our, our, re regarding uh, sustainability and green energy, um, th this is something that we're, that we're very uh, active on within basic fit it, from from the beginning to selecting our sites to figuring out what we're putting in them uh, in, in all of our Dutch clubs uh, we're, we're working with hundred percent green energy we we select uh, self-powered uh, machines cardio machines with only a, a few uh, exceptions um, we use water saving showers we use uh ecological uh cleaners and we're slowly phasing out plastic from our clubs this is a, a process that's in continual evaluation and refinement so we can just get better and better at this and the the green energy initiative is is something that we're also working on actively in in other countries as well as um identifying the locations where we can add solar panels to be able to provide our own energy as well. And I'm trying to click forward, but it's not working for me. And why not? So the big goal is to reach 5 million people by 2025. And we're going to do that uh, by by really focusing on healthy people a healthy community and a healthy planet so we we've really broken down all of our different uh, stakeholders and drivers in these areas to ensure that that this idea of uh, achieving reaching five million people is being pushed through a filter of uh, positive social impact because um we, we know that the more fit people we have, the more connections we create in a healthy community, uh, the more contribution we're going to have uh, to our to our world as a whole. I wanted to also speak to our code of conduct uh, as it pertains to our team and our employees. Um, because for us in basic fit diversity is a is a very important foundational pillar so in terms of the people that are working for basic fit uh, we have a slight majority of females that are working for us as as team members um, of our 5,000 employees about 60 percent of those uh, those people are under 30 33% are between the ages of 30 and 50, and uh, just under 10% are over the age of 50. So this is something that we're, we're constantly evaluating. Um, our, in our executive board, we have almost uh, half of the members of our executive board as, as women. Uh, so this is just con something that we're continuing, continually looping back to, to make sure that we're making this a focus and making uh, progress. Uh, in the spirit of beautiful infographics, I wanted to, oh, click back forward. Uh, I wanted to, to show you how, how we're, we're really internalizing this. Like this is, uh, our input is all of our stakeholders. We're passing that through the fi filter of our, of our mission and vision and making sure that, that our output is continually reflected back to make sure that we're, we're impacting healthy people, healthy planet, and healthy communities. And uh, just 
just to speak to active citizenship uh, initiatives that we've taken over the, the lockdown period. Um, I think what, I want to start by saying what, what we don't talk about at all, but it, what, what, I, what I see from our company specifically is that we're very active in all of the markets that, we're, um, that we operate in. Uh, working with our competitors to, to support uh, the government and creating safe protocols so that we can open as quickly as possible. Um, there, has, there has been absolutely uh, no holding back in information sharing over what, we ha what we're doing as business and what we can do and the, and, and the information and the, the studies that are happening worldwide so that we can get our doors open. And I think um, that, that's a behind closed doors thing that not too many people actually know about, but I think it makes a real difference in the speed at which we've been able to open in many countries. Um, another, another big initiative, because we weren't able to offer our members uh, our workouts at the club, we opened the Basic Fit app up for free to anyone who wanted to use and download it. And our, um, our product department and group exercise department uh, are, are streaming classes on uh, many social media channels many times a day. And we organized two of the uh, two home gym days, which, which reached over 1 million European um, people and, and got them active over a four hour um, fantastic class schedule offering. Uh, so the, the, these sort of initiatives that it's not just about the members, it's about, it's about people, it's about getting people fit and, and motiva motivating people through this time when they've just been completely interrupted. I think it's been a really good thing for many people in our branch to understand how, how hard this interruption is to get back into routine and how much effort we're putting uh, out there to make sure that people can get active at this moment. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, Luigi, is up next? Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, let me just show. Uh, let me go to my presentation. Can you see it? I hope so. All right. Uh, so thank you very much for, for this um, invitation. I just want to spend a few words about the Wellness Foundation. We are a non-for-profit organization based in Cesena in Italy. Uh, and we work very close with uh, uh, Technogy because we share the founder and, uh, and the chairman, the entrepreneur Nerio Alessandri. Uh, our mission is to develop and to spread the culture of wellness, of active and healthy lifestyle for people around the world. And we basically do it through the concept of creating wellness ecosystems, which means uh, uh, social, economic, uh, cultural environments that help people to make the right choices. Why is so important to, um, to focus on uh, wellness ecosystems? Because if we want to be successful uh, in our uh, social responsibility of making people healthier and, move, and more active, if we want to promote healthy lifestyles, we need to work basically on two main directions. One is working and operating where people live, which is the meaning of the ecosystem. We need to, to, do, to go where people live, where people study. We cannot wait for people to come to clubs. We cannot um, for people to uh, come to our sites, to our clubs, to our sport association. We need to go where they live. Schools, uh, homes, uh, uh, we need to go to corporation, etc. And the second main um, uh, focus area must be the involvement and the engagement of all the community. People, companies, institutions, private sector, public sector, all the actors or the main actors of a community. So uh, in order to be consistent and in order to be successful, 
in creating wellness communities, in creating wellness ecosystem, uh, we need to focus on the power of wellness, on the power of physical exercise as an element of attraction for people. Let me give you a, an example, a concrete example, before we go, we start talking about the Wellness Valley. Uh, Technogym uh, has been promoting uh, the Let's Move for a Better World campaign uh, in, the last six, in the last seven years. Uh, the Let's Move for a Better World is a social campaign uh, promoted by Technogym that wants to engage clubs and uh, the entire community and participants and people and clients and non-clients uh, um, in a big uh, social goal of making the world more active. So there is an engagement of the, uh, of the population, there is an engagement of the institution, there is an engagement of all the community with a social cause, which is uh, donating a gym to a school, donating a gym to a charity, donate a gym to some to a, a part of the community that needs to be more active. Why is this campaign important in what, in what we are um, telling in the, in the ecosystem? Because this brings to clubs the opportunity to be the main pillars, the main actor of the community. We need to start thinking of the fitness club, of the wellness clubs, of the sport association as key actors not just components, but key actors of a community, of a city, of a region, of a state. So we need to uh, empower uh, our uh, sector in uh, focusing on that and on playing this key role. Uh, I just give you a few numbers to, to, to give you the idea of what this means. In 2019, the Let's Move for a Better World campaign has been joined by uh, 1,373 clubs, almost 200,000 participants in 32 countries with 345 million calories burned. And we had thousands and thousands of people uh, exercising day, night, all days of the, of the week in order to achieve the same goal, the social cause. So why do we need to push on wellness ecosystems? Why do we need to push on creating wellness communities? Because we are starting uh, reading the first data about the side effects of the COVID-19 lockdown. This is a research made by the University of Tor Vergata in Rome, just at the end of April, about how the lockdown has changed the habits of the Italian population mm, during that tough period. And I don't think those numbers are uh, far from other countries. So we can clearly see that there is a big worsening of people's lifestyle. This means that in the coming months, we will, we will uh, face another big, huge emergency, which is the emergency of the NCDs, the emergency of the unhealthy lifestyles, the emergency of the sedentary lifestyle. We need to focus on that because here is where our sector, our industry plays the key role, both in the social and the, in the economic side. So having uh, fitness, wellness clubs that are engaged and empowered on playing this role, it means helping thousands, millions of people on improving their lifestyle and getting better during the next month. So, as I said, uh, the wellness ecosystem is a physical, cultural, and social and economic environment that incentives people to make healthy lifestyle choices, not only on movement, but also on nutrition and on mental health. And we know how the environment, the choices, and the social environment is important on uh, defining the health and the lifestyle of people. So if we need to work on that side, more than genetics and other stuff that are another sector. We need to focus on people habits, on people education to lifestyle. And this is exactly what uh, the Wellness Valley wants to do. Uh, the Wellness Valley project started in 2003 
as the first international district for knowledge and wellness on qu and uh, quality of life. And today it involves, sorry, it involves a region on Northeast Italy that counts 1.2 million residents and 30 million visitors every year. So what we do as a foundation that promotes and coordinates this program, we engage all the stakeholders, we coordinate all the stakeholders, public, private, big, small, uh, profit, not profit, in order to start and uh, develop projects for the population. Let me give you two examples. Uh, wellness Ballet, uh, the Play Wellness Project. This is an, an initiative that takes place in more than 1,200 schools with 2,000 hours of free physical exercise for kids and 17,500 kids from three to nine years old involved with their family in programs to fight childhood obesity. This couldn't be possible without the involvement of our sector, of our industry, because the industry, the sector, the gyms send their specialized trainers to school in order to help kids on educating kids on healthy and active lifestyle. Another project that involves the adult population, parks in wellness, we moved from 5,000 to 65,000 people involved in five years. This is free physical exercise in public parks. Again, thanks to the involvement of uh, the gyms, of uh, the sport association, of the fitness clubs of our territory. And this is a part of a social responsibility of this sector. Here, we're not talking about sport people. Sport people, they have their mindset, they go by themselves. Here we are talking about people that move from the couch to do something, from sedentarity to be active. And this is where we play this, uh, this main role. And together with the physical um, ecosystem, we have the digital ecosystem. This is the Wellness Ballet app. Uh, has been developed on the platform of the My Wellness uh, app of technology. And it's basically the digital ecosystem that we use in order to engage the population of our Wellness Valley area. So here, the population can find all the activities that are going on around, outdoor, indoor, of every kind, and they can book if they want to join them. So there is an informational side, an engagement side, they can receive tailored program for gym, from gyms or, uh, or personal trainers of their, uh, of their gyms. They can uh, connect with all the apps and the devices, the, the, the wearables that they already have or they want to, uh, to buy. Uh, they can calculate all the moves and uh, the level of activity and the improvement that, that, that they reach during the months and the weeks. So, this is just to say that we cannot only have a physical environment, we need to have a digital environment too, because this helps to spread the message and to engage the population. Uh, let me go to some number. Every year we present what is called the Wellness Valley Report, which is a study about the effects that the Wellness Valley project is bringing to the population of the region, to the community of the region, on three main topics, health and prevention, sustainable economic development, and tourism and territory promotion. So uh, the third edition of the report has been presented last September. And just let me go through very quickly, quickly to, some, uh, to some results. We have discovered that this region has the most active population of the country, of our country. Here we have 11% of the population which is more active than the rest of uh, of the country. Uh, opposite on the sedentary population, minus 14% of sedentary population than the average of the rest of the country. Uh, overweight population, minus 2.3% than the average of the, of the country. Uh, consumption of uh, fruits and vegetables following the WHO recommendation, the five portions of, of fruits and vegetables every day. Three plus 3.1% of the population 
follow the recommendation of the WHO on nutrition. Uh, another important thing, uh, we have developed a, a specific programs for doctors, for practitioners and, and doctors to recommend and prescribe the physical exercise. You, you should know you should know about the exercises medicine campaign, the prescription of physical exercise as a medicine. We are very proud of the fact that our region has been the first in Italy in 2014 to bring the prescription of physical exercise in the healthcare system, in the, in the public healthcare, health, uh, healthcare system. So we have a, a, a big use of uh, physical exercise for prevention and treatment of non-communicable diseases. And this brings to the fact that we have more and more gyms and uh, sport clubs and uh, uh, gym and uh, fitness clubs that offer the exercises medicine service. So we have the public institution from, on, from one side that prescribes the, the physical exercise as a medicine. And on the other side, we have gyms that are ready to give this service to the population. And those two things combined means culture, culture of active lifestyle. And this brings to the fact that we have minus 2% of hospitalizations due to NCDs. And what we are trying to measure now is the impact on the healthcare cost of all these activities, of these numbers. Uh, risk of disability due to the NCDs, minus 10%, 10.6% in the Wellness Valley compared to the, the rest of the country. So all those numbers are not, are not due just to the Wellness Foundation activity. It's not our, a celebration of ourselves. It's, it's the proof, is the fact that if you involve your entire community in a project, in a vision of helping people to live better, then numbers comes out. And think about the fact that this um, happened, started 17 years ago, so it takes a lot of time in order to do that. Uh, last thing about the, the SDGs, uh, those are the, uh, the main SDGs that we connect with, uh, um, with the um, uh, project of the Wellness Valley. Let me focus on the number 17, partnership for the goals. The main challenge that we have day by day is to keep institutions, to keep uh, stakeholders uh, engaged on those all these activities, because we all know how difficult it is to bring people to the table and make them working together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luigi. Uh, that was really interesting. Um, we've had a question from um, Adam Campbell. Uh, and maybe if I could hand this to Jennifer first, it said that um, to what extent are traditional brick operators considering outdoors, uh, so in the community, and, and close to schools, homes, workplaces, as part of their strategy and services for their customers? So uh, Jennifer, how, how, much, or how much capacity do you have to think about doing things differently in the world that we're currently operating in? I mean, the the great thing with um, basic fit is we were we were already there with at home, and we were starting with outdoors before any of this actually happened. So th there was already a bit of uh, development in that area, and the the lockdown just really accelerated that for us. Um, I, I think our vision at this point is that it's like the club is fitness somewhere and we want to be fitness anywhere and everywhere so our, our focus is to be able to offer options where your your membership is no longer just combined by four walls it's something that you can take with you anywhere and and do anywhere thank you um there's one thing for certain we could spend at least another couple of hours talking about this issue. Um, yeah. We did say that we'd be finished uh, just about by uh, two o'clock uh, European time, one o'clock British time. Um, can I just thank you to, to Steve, Jennifer and Luigi for being part of this and being so open. Um, I think uh, each of us has said it in different ways. That's really typifying the sector at the moment in terms of the openness about what they're willing to discuss. So um, thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to hand us... Uh, back to Andreas for a quick summary. Thank you.
Okay, thanks so much. Uh, I also want to profoundly thank Tani, uh, Jennifer, Steve, and Luigi for sharing us, uh, sharing with us their thoughts on ESG for our sector. It was absolutely interesting and uh, and brilliant. So um, so thanks so much. Um, I, I just want to say a few words uh, conclusively um, about some of the activities that you're back to doing. Um, in the, these weeks and a bit about our coming webinars. But first of all, um, I want to say let's be citizens, um, the special version of citizens for, um, for our industry. It was conceived by Jennifer, I believe, and uh, big uh, credits to, uh, to Jennifer for this awesome concept. Let's be citizens. Um, it cannot be said enough. Um, and then we hope to see a lot of you at the webinars tomorrow. We have two webinars, um, one on... Um, on the digitalization of personal training and another one on club management uh, software and how they can help us um, uh, with uh, social distancing and access control. So a uh, big focus on digital, which is a big priority of your active. And then on next Wednesday, we have our webinar about taking the temperature on reopening across Europe. And that will be moderated by Herman Rutgers, um, e uh, EA ambassador. And, and we'll have European C CEOs on board to um, take, take the temp temperature on, um, on reopening. Um, and we have several other uh, very, uh, very interesting educational webinars coming up um, over the coming uh, month. Please follow us on uh, europeactive.eu slash COVID-19 and there you can find all the materials you need and information on the upcoming webinars um, on that webpage. And I want just to, on a, on a final note, um, final note, please uh, visit that uh, really good library we have on that web page for all the COVID-19 materials that you need, including our new video-based um, uh, guidance for reopening of uh, fitness clubs. So operational guidance made into a video by, by the Europe Active team in Brussels to make it easy and manageable for everybody around Europe to, uh, to um, get ready for uh, reopening. Um, based on all the good um, standards for reopening and guidance we're receiving from our national association partners uh, all, all around Europe. So, um, so with that, thanks so much for a brilliant webinar. Thanks for attending and, um, and see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.